Welcome to this five minute video on the application of Siemens Imagine Lab for rapid trade studies. In this video, we demonstrate an example of rapid modeling of a hybrid electric propulsion system to study the effects of generator efficiency against certain failure modes. We will discuss the system layout, super components to represent subsystems, rapid buildup of the system, tuning parameters, variables and study settings, defining the mission conditions, and post-processing the results. The system will be composed of an electric motor, an electric motor controller, an electric motor cooling system, a propeller, a battery with a battery cooling system, an electric generator with a generator controller and a generator cooling system, an internal combustion engine with an engine control unit, some electrical loads, a materials definition interface, a mission profile interface, and a failure modes interface. All of these major subsystems are defined in the model as super components. The hybrid electric system is built up by dragging, dropping, and connecting super components from available libraries. In this example, you see a predefined super component available in the eArrow library. The user opens the library, picks the super component, and drags it into the workspace. At any time, a user can drill down into a super component to see its detail. Super components are built up from basic physical elements that are available out of the box within the AIMSIM libraries. The elements are connected and tuned to the performance details for a desired system. In this example of the cooling system super component, you can see it contains all the basic elements such as the compressor, expansion unit, tubing, valves, gases, accumulator, vents, etc. Let's take a look at how systems are built up from a blank canvas. We'll start by building a motor super component. The user starts by locating the basic elements from the appropriate libraries and drags them into the workspace. You'll notice that the elements come in with a shadowed background. That designates that the elements are not fully connected. The user then connects the ports and signals between the elements. As this progresses, the elements that are fully connected drop their background shadow. Once all of the connections are completed and the subsystem is fully defined, the user then defines its inputs and outputs and saves it as a super component and provides an icon to represent the subsystem for future systems models. Each subsystem or super component is defined with certain parameters that the user can tune when using in their models. In the case of this motor example, the user defines his or her specific torque, power, and efficiency. These parameters are also available as variables for DOEs or optimization studies. Once all the subsystems or super components are laid out in the workspace their ports and signals are connected, then the system is ready to run studies such as design of experiments or optimizations. At this point, you may have questions like, how does a user find super components? How do you know the super component is valid? What level of fidelity is the super component? What kind of assurance can I expect? How do I know how to connect subsystems? And can that be automated? These questions and more are addressed in our video entitled, An Infrastructure for Integrated Systems Modeling. Another important part of the systems model are setting system parameters and defining the mission profile. 